seventh installment to the SmackDown series, and they definitely got lazy with the names. WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. This game was released on November 11, 2005. And this game was developed by Pandemic and published by EA. Of course not, it was developed by Ux and published by THQ. So anyway, let's get into this review. There are two intros that can appear at the start of the game. They can be the Raw intro or the SmackDown intro used at the time. This is alright, not as good as the previous year but could be worse. The soundtrack for this game is pretty disappointing. There are like 10 or 12 songs in the soundtrack, but only 4 of them are good. The rest are just pretty bad rap songs. If you want to rap in the game, why not go for Eminem, Snoop Dogg, or something? These tracks are bad. But there are some real good songs on here as well, like Pieces, The Broken, Unretrophied, Unwitting. But that's about it. The roster in this game has improved. They have added some new guys like Muhammad Hassan, Carlito, Chris Masters, William Regal, and Eugene, Stephen Richards, Heidenreich. Yeah, remember Eidenreich? No. Well I apologize for reminding you. Roster may not be the best, but it's still pretty good. Also they added Stone Cold back in. <laughs> this game also has a good list of arenas. Pay-per-views from 2004 and 2005 are in the game. One of them being the Great American Bash, which is one of my favorite arenas. They also have an ECW arena and an old WrestleMania arena, WrestleMania 9. WrestleMania 9? Of all the WrestleManias, why WrestleMania 9? The entrances have changed in this game. They now have full entrances, so no jump cuts like the old entrances. While this is good, this can make entrances go on a little too long, for my liking. Not a huge problem, but it does hurt the entrances a bit. This game also still has the startup screen, which is good. Gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. First positive is that not only are many games still in, but you can actually choose which one you want to do at the start of a match, which is great. Now on to the negatives, however. In this game, they added a stamina system. Basically if you do too many moves, or run, or move, or play the damn game, your stamina will decrease. If it goes all the way down, you fall on your knees. You can bring it back up, by pressing select, and it goes back up, with you just standing there. This is stupid. I guess they were going for realism, but if you are that unfit, you shouldn't be a wrestler. This is just annoying, it slows down the gameplay and it's just a burden. But at least you can turn it off, so I suppose I can't have too much of a grudge about it. There's also no background music during matches, which kills the atmosphere a little, it's just more boring. I guess it does match the television show more, but this is a video game. No matter how realistic you want to make it, it has video game graphics and motions, it doesn't give the feeling of it being real. But EH2 felt we must make this feel real, so they decided to slow the gameplay down because, well, realism right? No. Smackdown has always been a fast feeling game, and it's like that because it's fun. Now this isn't as bad as it gets, but it set a bad trend for future games, and that led to this. Yeah, just saying. This game does still have clean and dirty meters, however, they have been mixed with the momentum bars. So when you do clean or dirty tactics, it adds to your momentum bar for finishers. Oh, it also can bring it. What the hell? Why can you lose momentum? It also happens if you do strikes and moves over and over again. This is bad. And not like bad dudes bad, like bad bad. Although clean wrestlers can get instant finishers from top rope moves, which is cool I guess. And by the way, you're only allowed one finisher now. Damn it, THQ! Why are you ruining everything? When you get full momentum, you can store your finisher or use it without storing it, which makes it more powerful. Only you have to do it in time or it will go away. I don't like this. Why can't we just have 5 finishers like older games? Also, when you do a finisher not stored, it will slow down and go black and white. Because this game needed to be any slower. 
but back to the positives or positive winning animations are back. Too bad they have to load though. Yeah, gameplay this year is pretty disappointing. I'd also like to point out the manual has an advertisement for merch, and one of them is a teddy bear undertaker. The dark, scary, and demonic undertaker in cuddly teddy bear form. How funny. And now, to the matches. Royal Rumble. In this Royal Rumble, you can select to have 10, 15, 20, 25, or 30 men, which is cool. Eliminating people in this match is a little easier, which is a good thing. However, getting people over the ropes can be a real chore. The rumble still isn't great, but it's better than the one in SmackDown vs. Raw. But that's not saying much. Backstage Brawl. Sadly no, you still can't roam around the backstage arena. So that's bad and nothing else matters. But let's talk about it anyway. The backstage brawl they have is pretty bad. It's so small and there's not much to do. But they have added a bar brawl, which is pretty cool, nice area, with cool spots. There's just one problem. It's only one area. It's a good match, but the fact I can't roam around the backstage, brings it down. Very the live match. This is a new match, well sort of. This was in Smackdown 2 but was removed, but this is different. There is a casket at the top of the Survivor Series arena. Yes this match, can only be played in the Survivor Series arena. Fair enough. So you throw your opponent into the casket, and you have to win a minigun to close the casket and win, and of course you have to hurt them to be able to win it. This is actually pretty cool, I like this match. Fulfill your fantasy match. This is replacing bra and panties. It's basically a pillow fight. Okay, that's interesting. In a fun way. Title match. Yes you can finally defend titles in exhibition again. You can select to have a WWE title or custom title. Nice feature. All the WWE titles have holders but custom titles don't for whatever reason. Which can be a little confusing, but at least the WWE titles have holders. Also you have to unlock the world titles for whatever reason. Also in this game anyone can fight for any championships. There's no rankings in this game. In this game they've added something called the locker room. This is basically a, well, locker room. You can customize the locker room however you want. This is a nice thing to have. There are also trophies, which is pretty cool. Some you can get in season, others in exhibition. A new mode they added is general manager mode. This is a great mode. You play as a general manager for either Raw or SmackDown, you can craft your own rosters from scratch, with the other general manager crafting their roster at the same time. Basically you play a year, create shows, with 6 matches and 2 promos. Promos can be heights, promotions, rivalries etc. Although you can only have 20 superstars on your roster at the time, which is just not enough, but I guess it's because the roster isn't big enough. The goal is to get more people watching your show than the other show. It's a great mode to have and is well made, but with that said, it's not a personal favorite. It can be pretty stressful and a little complicated for me. Now onto the create modes. Create a superstar. They remove the ordering, which is great. It still starts on the profile but you can shift from section to section easily so it's okay. The models are improved and there's a good selection of parts. This mode is a lot better this year. Create an entrance. New mode, well not really, but you can edit entrances out of the move set mode. You can also create an advanced entrance where you select motions for different parts of the entrance. You can also set the lighting effects etc. Great new feature. Create a championship. This mode is back in and titles are a lot cheaper which is great. And now for the season mode. Season mode is a lot shorter this year, probably a little too short. No, definitely too short. Instead of going through one calendar year, you play four stories, which is like five or six months in total. There aren't many stories in the game either, so you can only play season like two or four times before you've seen pretty much everything. Oh and also, the back of the box says, play season of Raw and season of Smackdown, and I quote, without story repetition, are you kidding me? 
If you play as Booker T, Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, Big Show, even Undertaker, you get the same damn story. You don't call that story repetition. Stories are repeated more in this game than any other game. One big thing this year is that your character now talks, which is great. But then again, that may be a reason for the lack of stories this year. Some of the storylines are alright, the Teddy alone, getting run over wasn't terrible, the one where you're feuding with Triple H and Ric Flair is actually pretty good, and the storylines where Eric Bischoff eventually vacates every title on Raw is pretty funny, but there's so few it doesn't last. WWE Shop is back, which is great. Although this year you have to do certain things to unlock the ability to purchase some items, which is weird. Sometimes you need a certain trophy to be able to buy something. If this is the case, why not just unlock them then and there? I don't like this. But that's not the worst part. To unlock the ability to buy Jake the Snake Roberts, you have to unlock him in the PSP version of the game and copy it onto the console. What the actual hell? Why do I need to have a different version of the game on a different console to unlock somebody on this version? Highly illogical. This was back when the PSP was pretty new, so if you didn't have one, it would be pretty expensive to get one, and also you can unlock one legend. How ridiculous. There is a Royal Rumble storyline in this game, and interestingly enough, if you lose the Rumble match, Mr. McMahon comes out and says the winner apparently cheated, and the match is restarted in a six-man over-the-top rope battle royal. Fair enough, that's one way to solve things. But if you lose that match, season mode is over. You don't even make it to WrestleMania. Really? The only way you can continue to WrestleMania is to win the Royal Rumble. They couldn't think of any other storyline. There is no flexibility in this season mode. What is this? Wow, even the credits in this game are boring now. But anyway, overall this game is still pretty good. The roster has improved, they added the very alive match back, title matches are back, a locker room is added, general manager mode is added, and create a superstar is improved. However the gameplay has suffered a lot, entrances are a little too long, season mode is lacking, stamina sucks, and you are only allowed one finisher. I give this game a 6.5 out of 10. Lowest rating so far, so close to 5 out of 10, not that this is a very bad game, but this led the series in a bad direction for even worse games down the line. So that has been another review on the next, you can probably guess, will be on Smackdown vs Raw 2007.